starting. Welcome, welcome to Community Yoga with Jada today. So go ahead and take a few deeper breaths. You can close your eyes or keep eyes open. Allow yourself to feel the breath moving in your body. And then take a few really nice, long, deep exhalations. So breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Let go of the busyness of your day. Let go of whatever you may be carrying that is not going to serve you in this practice. Expectations. Resistance. Your to do list. Two more long breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. And then you can allow your breath to return to its natural rhythm. And as you observe your breath, Just consider how you can honor your unique identity, your unique lived experience in your practice today. And as you hold that intention, also find space in your heart for those who are not practicing for whatever reason at this place and time, hold space. It could be a particular person, or it could just be a general holding of space for those who aren't able to be in the practice or who are not in the practice. And then we'll begin to move with our breath. So if you're on props, you may now want to mindfully roll off of them and come on to your back. We're gonna stay on our back. So we're gonna inhale and bring arms up overhead and point to the toes. And as we exhale, arms will come down by your side and you'll reach through the heels, flexing the feet. So let your Body move at the pace of your breath. We'll go ahead and close the door very soon. So in leading the movement at the pace of your breath, you're aiming for your arms to be as high as they go up overhead at the top of the inhalation. And then as you flex the feet and arms come down by your side, you're at the bottom of the exhalation. So if you find that as you're inhaling, you're sort of holding your breath to make the arms all the way overhead, then speed up the movement. If you get the arms up and you're still um, breathing in, you can slow down the movement. So take two more like that, just be really mindful. And you can modify this any way. We're just sort of lengthening the spine. We'll work with a few different movements in the spine today, beginning to warm up the body. 
And then after your last round, you'll bring arms up overhead. They can be in kind of a cactus position, a Y position, or all the way up overhead. And we'll start to bend the spine laterally. You're going to inhale and reach the right hand behind you and reach through the right heel. As you breathe in, exhale, come to your center. And then inhale, take the other side. Now left, reach through the left fingertips, reach through left heel. And then come back through center. Continue again, leading with your breath. And if it feels good at some point to just pause for a breath or two, you can do so. Pause for a breath or two in the pose or in center. So we stretch the spine upward. We're stretching now a lateral stretch. And let's take two more passes through each side. Nice, everybody. And then once you have completed those two passes, you'll draw knees into the chest. So take your time, there's no rush, but when you're ready, draw knees into the chest and begin to make some nice movements on your low back. Nice circles or rocking side to side. So again, exploring how to honor your unique experience. And if the pace feels either too fast or too slow, know that you can speed up or slow down. Rotating both directions if you're making circles. A couple more passes. And then we'll bring the feet to the floor. Arms can come to a T position or a cactus position or rest on the low ribs. And we'll just work with a gentle twist. So breathing in. In center, breathe out, drop knees to one side, gaze over the opposite shoulder. Breathe in, come through center, breathe out, take the other side. So moving at your pace. And you can experiment with distance between the feet. You can experiment with a longer hold as I'm seeing some of you doing. That's beautiful. If you want to work your core a little bit more, you can bring the feet off the floor and keep shins parallel, knees together, drop knees to one side, come back, drop knees to the other side. So trying to bring the knees down to the floor, but not quite touching the floor before you bring them back up. So again, honoring the different ways that we move based on the different identities and lived experiences that we have. Good, let's take Two more passes through the twist. Modifying that however you need to. Very nice, everybody. You'll come back through center, no rush, but after your last pass, you'll come back through center. Place um, the feet on the floor, heels more or less in line with the hips, hands down by your side. 
And as you're ready, we'll begin to take some bridge poses. So you'll inhale, lift the hips, option to lift arms up overhead or not. Exhale, bring the hips and hands down together. So we've twisted, stretched upward, stretched the side bodies a little bit. Bridge pose is technically a back bend. So we're getting a little bit of a back bend here. Good. And again, if it feels good to hold the pose, you can also hold with hands down by your side for a little bit longer hold. That feels better. So his hands down by the side will be more supportive, or you can even lay interlace fingers underneath you behind your back and press the little finger side of the hands into the earth as you lift the hips. Let's take two more. Nice, everybody. More or less trying to keep feet stacked over the, um, or I'm sorry, ankles and knees sort of in one line. So the knees are not dropping too much off to the side. Let's take one more being mindful of that. And then, from here, when you're ready, you'll cradle the knees into the chest once more. And then bring feet to the floor, turn to one side, and you'll make your way on your time up to all fours. And now would be a good time if you have blocks to bring them to the front edge of your mat. So you have them once we get to a lunge. And as you arrive on all fours, Feel free to just take whatever movements feel good. So you can swing hips a little side to side. You can rotate the hips in a circle. It never feels good here. Moving the neck. And then we'll bring wrists under shoulders, knees under hips, and we'll start moving with cat and cow. So inhaling, heart lifts, face lifts, sit bones reach to the sky. Exhale, round. Finding now um, an equal inhalation and exhalation to the extent that you're able. Breath is in and out through the nose, unless your nose is blocked. Nose is blocked, obviously breathe through your mouth because it's important to breathe. The eyes can be closed as much as feels good to in the practice. Bring your awareness in. Let's take three more nice passes through cat and cow. Also an option to come onto wrists if or um, onto fists if your wrists are tight, or even onto forearms. When you're ready you'll find your first downward facing dog. So hands are placed um, a little forward of the shoulders, fingers rotate out toward the edges of the mat. Turn the toes, lift hips high. And start by just walking it out. Always an option to come to forearms if that's more appropriate for you. Also an option to just stay in all fours and extend one leg at a time behind you. Walking it out, getting a nice stretch in the backs of the legs, lengthen the spine.
And then on your time, you'll find child's pose. Drop the knees, drop hips towards heels. Release forehead down to the mat. And you can assess if you want a more active child's pose. So sort of coming up on the fingertips, reaching the spine long, stretching across the upper back, or if it feels good to just soften, release forearms down, release forehead. Can also take gentle movements with the wrists here. And then you'll begin to move once more with the breath, sliding the hands forward, finding a kneeling plank or even maybe a sort of gentle kneeling back bend. And then exhale, press the hips back to child's pose. So inhale to kneeling plank, exhale to a child's pose. And you can continue with this movement a few more rounds. And then if you would like, you can begin to move between down dog and either a full plank or a kneeling plank. With the breath, inhale to the plank variation, exhale to child's or down dog. Just honoring your body right now, continuing to check in. Everybody's practice is going to be different. Everybody's movement is going to be different. And then the next time you are there, you will pause for three long breaths, either in down dog or in child's pose, your choice. And try to bring the breath a little more into the belly. You'll soften the knees, step the feet forward in between the hands, and find a forward fold. Now, it's also an option to hop the feet forward. Let the hands be grounded on something. So on the earth, on opposite elbows, on your blocks, and you can have a generous bend in your knees here so that the head really releases down and in toward the knees. And then whatever little movements feel good, you can walk the hands over to one side, come back through center, walk the hands over to left, back through center. Also an option if you're not comfortable in a full forward fold to come to a half lift and just stay a little more upright. Good. And then we'll all come to half lift. Long spine, gaze toward the floor. Beautiful. Breath in. On your exhalation, ha, forward foot. We'll rise up to standing, dropping hips towards heels. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands come to your right center. Welcome to standing, everybody. Let's release hands down, make a few rolls of the shoulders. Many people sit on devices. Nice roll for the shoulders. Good. Both directions. Okay. And then just shake it out. Up. Swing. And then once you feel like you 
kind of got the whatever shimmies out that you need to get out. You'll come and find stillness at the front edge of your mat. You may want to take socks off unless you feel really wetted to your socks right now, just so you have a little more grip on the mat. Let's rock a little front to back. Feet are more or less parallel, but don't tweak knees or hips to get there. Shoulders relax on the back. Feel all four corners of the feet pressing into your mat. You can lift the toes and then spread them and place them down nicely. We'll pause for a grounding breath between each round of half and full six words. We'll breathe in and out. And breath, arms sweep up, lengthening the spine. Exhale, forward fold, arms can come out to the side or through the midline, hinge at your hips, reach with the heart, forward fold, soften the knees as much as you need to. Inhale, come to half lift position. Length in the back of the neck, exhale, fold. Grounding into the feet, inhale, rise up to standing, however feels best to you. Arms come up overhead, and exhale, hands to heart center. Breathe in, and out. In breath, arms up. Gaze can follow the hands if that feels okay on your neck. Exhale to fold. Beautiful. Inhale, come up halfway. And exhale, fold. And on your in breath, we'll rise up to standing. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Breathe in and out. Can you take the next round on your own pace? You want to move through two more quickly? Go for it. Your practice. You can follow my visual cues here if you're not familiar with this sequence. Nice. Option that a lot of people are moving through too. Let's take one more. And then we'll just meet back in standing once you take that. Let's observe. Nice, everyone. Again, we'll breathe in and out. In breath, arms sweep up. Exhale the full. Inhale, come up halfway. And exhale the full. And now you'll step your right foot back. You find a lunge. You want that front knee to be right over front ankle. And now your choice here. If you have blocks, this is a nice time to use them. Hands are grounded. So you get a little more openness in the chest when you're up on blocks. It's your choice. But And your choice of back knee lowered or lifted. So if it feels better to have your back knee down, go for it. Once your lower body is nice and stable, option to lift the arms. Also fine to keep hands grounded. Nice, let's shoulders soften. Feel your heart be buoyant, legs strong. Two more breaths. Good. On an exhalation, you release the hands down. You'll set that front foot back to your plank. We're gonna hold here three breaths. Feel free to drop the knees. As always, modify if you need to. Pressing your whole self away from the earth. Breath in and on your exhalation, you'll lower yourself down, knees, thighs, belly, chest, forehead. 
Inhale, come up without taking weight on the hands. So you're lifting your head, your shoulders, your heart, and your hands. Shoulders relax on your back. Three breaths here. You release down. And in your time, press back to down dog. As you're ready, you'll lift your right leg high. Option to open up at the hip, so stacking the hip, bringing the gaze under the right armpit. You can bend the knee and um, rotate the right ankle, or you can just keep that leg held high. As you're ready, you'll square the hip, bring knee towards nose. So you're bringing your knee towards your nose. You can round and hover here towards the core. When you're ready, you're gonna bring the right foot forward. And again, check that knee is right over ankle. Find your ideal leg position. And then you can lift the arms whenever you're ready. So just check. Don't want to have the knee coming out over the toes. So if that's the case, walk the, that foot a little more forward. Good. Three breaths. Soften shoulders. Legs are strong. Heart lifts. Nice, everybody. Don't worry if your balance is challenged. It's part of it. Stay with it. Good. And release. And then you're going to step back, foot forward, forward fold. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale out through the mouth. As you're ready, rise up to stand. Your Exhale. Nice, everybody. Breathe in. And breath hands to the bottom overhead. And exhale, hinge of the hips, reading to the bottom. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale to fold. And now you'll step your left foot back. And your choice of lunge. So just like we did last time. Your choice. Find your lunge. Three breaths. Arms can be on the ground. They can be on the rocks. They can be lifted. Back leg. Your choice. And then we'll bring hands down. Go ahead and lower that back knee. And then we're going to draw the right hip back in space. Flex the right foot. You can even slide it a little bit forward. Spread the toes of the right foot. And then we'll inhale, lengthen the spine here. And then on your exhalation, if it feels appropriate, you can begin to lower the head down toward the knee to your degree. If your back feels better with the spine long, just stay in the spine long position. And there will be sensation here, in case you didn't notice. Just stay with it. But enjoy a sweet stretch, not moving into strain. Just come back to a lunge, come to child's pose, you need to come out. Good, and then we're gonna walk back to our lunge. And you'll bring right hand on the inside of the right foot. Walk the right foot off to the edge of the mat. You can also turn the toes a little out. This is a hip opening stretch and it looks different for everybody. So you can be here, you can even have your hands up on blocks. You can work your way down to forearms. Everybody's body is different. So don't worry about your neighbor. You with your stretch. 
And again, take care of this, um, this knee so that knee is still sort of over the ankle. Nice, everybody. Take your time. When you're ready, you'll come out. We're going to meet in downward facing dog. So you get there sooner, you hang out longer in down dog, it takes you longer to get there, you'll be there a little less time. Find your down dog. Nice, everybody. And now some options. You can stay in down dog, find child's pose or move through a flow, climbing your plank, lowering down, taking the back bend of your choice. Nice, everybody. Now left leg can come high. Option, open up at the hip as you did last time. If you did last time. And stay there. You're going to bring that foot forward when you're ready. To work on your time. Option to hold that knee in. Bring those to me. And then you'll make your way to your lunch. Your choice of hand position. Your choice of leg position. Three or four breaths. Soft shoulders, light heart. You're ready, you'll release down. And then we'll lower the back knee and draw left hip back in space. So you can reach that left heel a little more forward, so spread the left toes to deepen the stretch in the back of the left leg. And you can also, as you did on the other side, experiment with a longer spine. And then experiment with drawing the head toward the knee. And then as we did on the other side, we'll walk back through the lunge, bring left hand to the inner edge of the left foot. Walk that left foot now to the outer edge of the mat. And move into your degree of stretch here in this hip opener. So that knee can even roll a little on the um, little to the side of the foot. Hands on blocks or hands just on the mat. And as you're ready, come back to your center. Frame the foot with your hands. And we will step back to the forward, forward fold. Release the head down, deepen the forward fold, however feels good to you. Begin to straighten the legs a little bit if that feels appropriate, but be mindful of your low back. And on your time, He'll soften the knees and use legs and core to rise up to standing. So 
Okay, we're going to do explore a couple different options for a dynamic lateral stretch. And I'm gonna, I think eventually you all will turn and face those windows, but let me just give the options because um, it doesn't work out well for me to come here. So one option will be to move between warrior two. So this is your warrior two and the side angle. So this is a nice you inhale to the side angle, exhale to warrior two. So that's one option. The other option is just to have the toes facing forward. And you inhale to the lateral stretch, exhale back to center. Okay, so your your choice. I think it might just be easier if everybody faces that way. Um, and I'll verbally guide you. So if you're taking the warrior two, you want heel to arch alignment and the knee coming so it's over the ankle and coming over the little toe side of the foot. So again, it's inhale to your choice of lateral stretch. Exhale to warrior two. Generally gaze point is on this um, middle finger of the hand that is over the bent knee. And you can modify this however feels good. So I see people doing that, which is great. Yes, you can add that reverse warrior here. And if you want to deepen your stretch, you can also deepen the side angle and hold for a few breaths. So work with this in your time, your way. And if it's some way you decide you want to switch it up and take the other option, go for it. Let's take maybe one to two more passes. Feel free to settle in for a longer hold if that feels good. And then as you are ready, you'll switch to the other side. So you'll reverse the position of each. being somewhat mindful of what you did on the other side so you kind of even it out between the two sides of the body knowing that our bodies are asymmetrical so two sides may need somewhat different things And let's take one more pass through this side. Feel free to go for a longer hold if that feels appropriate. When you're ready, no rush. We'll come back to center and turn all the toes toward the window. You have a block handy, can be helpful here. So feel free to adjust your stance. We'll take a wide leg forward fold. I think most of you already know where we're going. So you'll inhale, hinge at the hips, reach the heart forward. Spine is nice and long. When you first come down, come up and come to kind of a half lift position to really get the spine. Make the spine nice and long. These can be soft here if that feels appropriate. You can also have hands on the blocks and keep the spine long. And from that position of length, then release the head down if that feels appropriate. Always an option to widen 
the stance so that the head comes down a little closer to the floor or to a block. And modifying any way you need to. Adding some alternate stretches here as I see some doing is perfect. You just stay here, your choice. Also an option to come up if you need to. And then we'll heel to the feet a little closer together if you widen your stance. Ground into the feet, bring hands to the hip creases and really ground down through the heels. You're gonna come up leading with the crown of the head. Nice flat back. Beautiful. And then it's all heel to the feet so that they're under the hips and you can turn around and face me now. We'll take a counter pose. We'll squeeze the shoulder blades together. Nice cactus. Feet more or less parallel into the hips. Let's side tweaks joints. And then on an exhalation, you'll round, draping the fingertips in front of the chest. And then we'll work with that a few passes. So inhale, nice squeeze of the shoulder blades. And then exhale around, drop chin to chest. With the fingers sort of be in some imaginary sand there in front of your chest. Let's take one more round. Arms come up and exhale, release the hands with a gentle back. <laughs> and just pause for a minute here. Observe your breath, observe your body. Eyes can be closed or with a gaze toward a point on the floor. And release your one leg open the eyes. Shake the out. Okay, we will take a pass through eagle pose. Um, balancing pose, you can um, modify that as you like. We'll bring the arms in first. If you have your own way of practicing, go for it, but I'll guide to move the arms in and then legs. Um, offer some modifications. So we're gonna inhale, sweep the arms open. You only see one of the two there. <laughs> um, okay, exhale. Um, let's cross left arm over right. Give yourself a big hug to start. You can kind of shimmy the shoulders a little bit. And then you'll, you may stay here or you can bring arms to eagle arms. So Elbows are stacked, you can bring the backs of the hands or the palms together. Elbows come up, forearms away from the face. And now the arm is on top, this is the left arm. We'll soften the left knee and really ground into that foot. Right leg crosses over left. And then if you need support in the balance, you can just bring the toes to the floor. It's available in your body to wrap that foot all the way behind. That's fine, but try to keep hips square. So don't sacrifice the alignment just to try to get into some idea of the pose. Good, you can bend a little more if that feels available. Let's take three more breaths here. Don't worry if you fall out, just stick with it. And you'll mindfully release the legs. Inhale, release the arms open. And now the other arm crosses on top. So I think that's left arm crosses on top. Left, right. Is that right? Now right arm on top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, did, I didn't mirror it. I tried to mirror it, but I did not mirror it that time. Okay, so you bring your arms. You know which arm I'm on top. That's the arm that should be there on top. And then as you're ready, so the arm that is up, it is that knee that bends and that leg that is your standing leg. So you are all there before me. So the arm that is up, ground into that foot and cross the opposite leg. And we're trying to have a little kickstand, trying to keep the heart a little bit lifted. So you're ready, you can release the legs. Release the arms, the arms out wide, open the heart, gaze can come to the sky. And then release the arms down. Come to the front edge of your mat. And begin. And out. And that arm sweep up overhead. And self hinge the hips, really reach your heart forward, fold back. And then soften the knees. And you'll bring your right hand kind of right, sort of right in front of the center of both of your feet, and then begin to straighten the left leg and lift the left arm up to the sky for a twist. You breathe in here. Exhale, come to your center. And then inhale, take the first breath. Take one or two more passes. So you just twist. It's always an option to bring the hand to the low back. It's not accessible in your body to have the arm extending up to the sky. Beautiful. And now check in with yourself. We will meet on our bellies. You can get there through down dog and the vinyasa. And stay in down dog for a little while. Can pause in child's pose. Take a couple of vinyasas if that feels good. Your practice. And once you get to your belly, you'll relax. So relaxation pose on the belly. You can just support the forehead with the pillow of the hands. And rest one cheek on the mat and have the arms long by the side of the body. Whatever feels good. And then we're going to bring some distance between the feet and make the feet parallel to each other. And come up on our forearms. So the elbow is right under the shoulder or a little bit forward of it. Sphinx pose, shoulders release on the back, heart just forward. Back of the neck long. Eyes can be closed or with a soft gaze towards the um, Point on the floor, a few inches beyond your fingertips. Keeping some length in the back of the neck. So think about reaching the heart forward. Trying to avoid too much reaching through the chin. Stay where your body needs to be.
And then as you're ready, I'll come back to your relaxation pose on the belly. You are resting one cheek on the mat, turn the other cheek to press. And you'll bring forehead to the mat, feet parallel once more, arms long by the side of the body. And then in breath, you lift the head, shoulders, hands, and legs. And as you exhale, you'll release down. You take that three or four more times and modify this any way you like. If you want to take just legs, you can do that. You may want to turn palms down. Can take one leg at a time. You can just lift the upper body and interlace fingers behind the back. So work with this movement. A few breaths. And when you feel you are done with this movement, maybe one or two more passes, or you can take any other back bend, we'll all eventually meet in child's pose. Take support of your hands, come up to seated. And we'll just show where we're going next. We're going to make a little nest for ourselves for Shavasana. And I'm going to show where we're going. If there are stretches you want to do on your back before you get into Shavasana, you can take those, but I'm just going to kind of show you the setup here. So I think it's nice and something I read recently talked about how we're so um, over efforting all the time. Um, and so it's good to have a soft landing. Because if you're over efforting and you overdo, and you don't have a soft landing, then that'll be good. So it can be nice to set up a Thank you. And if some of you are familiar with this practice and want to just come to your back, take your final stretches, go for it. I'll just be talking about setting up the nest here. So I think it's nice to have a blanket under you, something for the head. So this is set up so that there's a little support under my shoulders, and then there's a support for my head also. So that would look like this, and I'm laying on it. So it comes to kind of the upper part of my shoulders, and then this thicker fold is under my head. I'm gonna bring that bolster under the knees. Sometimes if you have a really big curve in your lumbar spine, you can even take two bolsters. And in that case, if your feet are kind of up, it can also feel good to take something under your feet. So, and it's good to cover up also. So I see folks going and grabbing props, that's great. Help yourselves, if you get halfway into your nest and you realize you need something else, just signal to me. You'll make your way there when you're ready. And also just take care that your hands are not resting on the cold floor. So they could rest on the belly or you can place a piece of clothing or a blanket over your belly and let the hands then drape onto that. So once you're there, if it feels comfortable to close your eyes, you can. 
but doesn't feel comfortable, just find a point on the ceiling and maintain a soft gaze on a point on the ceiling. You can scan your body from the crown of the head to the tips of the toes, and then back up from toes to the crown of the head. And even as you settle in, if you suddenly realize you need something, please signal to me. You feel cold. You realize you need some an additional support under your legs or under your ankles. Just signal to me. I'll try to keep an eye. So as you scan the body, you're just trying to observe without judgment any sensation. And if you find, I mean, in Shavasana, we are trying to be in a state of, un, of not doing, a state of rest. Sometimes it is very hard to rest. And if you're struggling to maintain stillness, you could also move through the body from the tips of the toes, the legs, the torso, hands, and up through the crown of the head and make just very subtle movements as you move through each space in the body. And also let your awareness be anchored in the rise and fall of your breath. And as you soften and relax, be aware of the support of the earth underneath you, knowing that you are held and supported. You can release the worries of the mind into the earth. And release the burdens of your heart into the earth. Continue to be grounded in gentle awareness, the breath. As you try to let go of all doing and allow yourself rest.
And now begin to deepen your breathing. Then make gentle movements with your fingers and your toes. As you're ready, you can make some bigger movements, maybe a stretch up overhead. Drawing knees into the chest can also feel good. When you're ready, you'll bend the knees and turn to one side. And pause on your side if that feels appropriate. And eventually you'll make your way up to sitting. And you'll sit well, tall spine. Place hands. Step palms over your heart space. Taking a minute to honor your practice, your identity and experiences, identities and experiences. And touching base with that place in our hearts that we created that intention for those who are not in the space, not in the room. And making a note of anything you want to carry with you into the rest of your day. We'll close with one long resonant boom. So we'll do the syllables ah, oh, um, and draw out the M. So nice chant to close the class. So we'll breathe in and out. And we'll breathe into it again. So bow your head in the direction of your hands. And gently wake up in the eyes and the gaze. Thank you. With gratitude. Thanks, everybody. Have a good weekend ahead. And this will be posted on the Community Yoga YouTube channel. Unfortunately, the first part, first five, 10 minutes got, I did not have the recording on. So the rest of it is there. Be well, everybody.